morning, church. So I've titled the, uh, my sermon that I've done today, Image, The Lens in Which We See Ourselves. So we could argue that what we see, for the majority of people in the world, is the dominant sense in which we interact with the world and each other. But what about the way we see ourselves? Not necessarily physically in the mirror, but on the reflection on our life. Who we are and why we do what we do. Do we see ourselves as a good person? Do we see ourselves as a bad person? The way we see ourselves in this modern world can be a maze all on its own. In deep reflection, we might be able to sort ourselves out, but if you have time, or we perhaps neglect to, sometimes we might use the neglection to maybe protect ourselves so we don't have to worry about all that kind of stuff. And uh, we sometimes we miss out on discovering ourselves. And when we miss out on finding out exactly who we are, we just follow what other people do, and we think without battering an eye, and, and that sometimes contrasts to our real self, who we actually are, and we are contrasted our sense of self, and we keep our personalities shallow and simple, whether that's by choice or by our modern cultural attitudes. The way we see ourselves has huge ramifications for not only ourselves, but for society as a whole. And it perhaps can make our view of God unclear and incomplete. So to really dive into what I'm getting here, I've nominated myself to be a case study. What better person than someone already at the front, willing or otherwise? So, I got my pen and I have my piece of paper here. And I'm going to open up to you guys. What do you see when you look at me? Potential. What's that? Potential. Potential? Yeah? Young. Man. Young. <laughs> Knew that one was going to be in there. Confident? Brother. A brother? Yeah? Spiritual. Spiritual? Yep. Messenger. Messenger? Yep. Oh. Someone. Get to know more. Syndicated. What was that, sorry? Syndicated. Syndicated. Joyful. <laughs> Joyful. Faithful. <laughs> slash loyal. Anything else? Potential. What was that? Sincere. Potential. Sincere. 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 What was that? At the back? Professional. Professional. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else? Handsome. Handsome. Oh, well, thank you very much. <laughs> A person who needs a savior like us. Maybe one or two more. A willing spirit. Willing spirit. <laughs> Prepared. Prepared. Oh. <laughs> Maybe one more. Courageous. Courageous. Yeah? Wonder 
unsure about self. I like that one. All right, so we're going to come back to that later. All right. So I expected a few of those. A couple were interesting curveballs in there. Um, but we often sometimes, to our own detriment, try to simplify and hone in on just a few select broad arcing roles to describe ourselves, such as answering complex questions with basic and simple answers, such as the tried and true, how would you describe yourself in three words? Now, trying to simplify our character, let's say in this case for work, to try to make yourself look good for a position that you really desire, you kind of take liberties and make yourself a little make yourself look a little more wholly positive and a great worker. Classics such as hardworking, teamwork, energetic come to mind. So these are broad strokes to perhaps get your foot in the door. Not totally disingenuous. One would certainly display these characteristics, at least sometimes. But how could you ever possibly wrap your entire self in just three words? And the answer to that is you, you really can't. And I would argue that it's probably a detriment to our psyche. We quite often define ourselves by the things we believe, do, and what we own. Things or people we are influenced by, past decisions and experiences, and also the way society defines us. These influences all come together in a mash of sometimes conflicting roles. So what are the factors that contribute to the way that we see ourselves? It could be attributed to a combination of tropes, cliches, and stereotypes that is associated with gender, age, work, and personality, and others. Our perspective can take a huge turn or impacted for years or even decades by our experiences, whether grand and or inspiring sights, powerful, insurmountable pain and sadness, the smallest of happiest moments, our lowliest defeats and mistakes, or our greatest leaps into the stars of success. We sometimes use work to justify or assert ourselves in the community. Rank, income, power, prestige can be powerful incentives to show one's self-worth through success or accumulation of titles and accolades. Our roles in our family structure, such as carers or head of families or rebellious teenagers. Perhaps you're in a club or a social or political movement, an ist or an ism, uh, quite profound these days, activists can emoke powerful emotions for social change and movement. The culture we grew up in, whether we've, what we've been exposed to and the traditions our family adopted or continued, the attitude we have about ourselves and the people around us, the words of others spoken in praise of joy or comfort and pain, and the ones spoken behind our backs in whispers. How much and where we consume our media and what sources. And the one that potentially ties all of these together is the exposure to change and our reaction or inaction to it. These core influences build up over our lives that feeds into our self-identity, positive, positively, and or negatively. Sometimes we find that the way we see ourselves can persist negatively even after we've seen a positive change. We hold on to the past with an almighty grip, things we are comfortable with. We come to arbitrary and uh, narrow definitions of oneself when we are, in fact, so much more. Don't let labels define your life. We are often not honest with ourselves either. I mean, like suicide rates are up. People are struggling with depression and loneliness more. Why is this the case when we live in arguably the most interconnected society ever? Are we being simply polite? 
not to inconvenience others, burden perhaps, maybe we don't know how to start the conversation. Well, dang, things are not good. We often say all good, I'm um, fine, when at times things are really not. Selling ourselves in a cute little box to fit with the role in society. And society has always been a degree, always been a bit binary in the sense of you ain't one of us, you don't belong, putting limitations by the way they look, act and believe putting us in boxes and ignoring whatever else we can provide. Some of the greatest human atrocities has been reasoned as such. The Bible has some great examples of perception on others and, and the way that we see ourselves influences our view of others. The disciples are an easy example. In Acts 4, in Acts chapter 4, verse 13, it reads, when they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. People only saw at the time that the disciples were former fishermen or in the case of Matthew, a tax collector, Simon the Zealot, a hardcore Jewish patriot that would fight Romans before he became a disciple. These people wouldn't normally be associated with mission work, perhaps. In the case of many disciples, they were fishermen, and fishermen were generally regarded as illiterate. And tax collectors were generally despised, I'm sure. For not only did they collect the money for the occupying power, which in this case, back then, was the pretty heavy-handed and despised Roman Empire, they were usually themselves dishonest, charging more tax than was legally required in order to boost their own income. In the case of Simon the Zealot, before he became a disciple, he was in a band of fiercely patriotic Jews who were dedicated to removing the Roman occupiers from the land by any means necessary, even violence. In Luke chapter 22, verse 24, it reads, However, however there also arose a heated dispute among them, the disciples, over which one of them was considered to be the greatest. Even the disciples didn't truly know that their own true purpose as they squabbled amongst themselves to see who would be the greatest next to Jesus. In the new kingdom, they thought that he was going to form here on earth, overthrowing the mighty Roman Empire and the such. They didn't know the hidden passion, influence, perseverance or knowledge that was with them. And, and we are worth a great deal to God as well. God sees all of our character now and in time to come. Despite all of our flaws and pain we cause each other and to him, he yet reaches to us. This serves as a warning perhaps for us to not let the way we see the world interrupt how God sees this world. If we mix this up, this probably has some grave consequences in the way that we see God in our own eyes. We limit the way we see God by putting him in these limited boxes just like each other, just like we do to others. We must adjust our focus to see God in all of his character. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 26, says here, Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap, nor store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Matthew chapter 5, verse 14, You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. And Romans 15, verse 7, Accept one another then, just as Christ accepted you in order to bring praise to God. All right. So we're going to go back to this list. So just to refresh your memories, some of the things called out was potential, young, confidence, brother, spiritual, messenger, handsome, willing, spirit, prepared, unsure about self, someone to get to know more, joyful, 
faithful and loyal, sincere, professional person who has need of a saviour and courageous. So I spent a couple of weeks having my own reflection about who I am and why I do what I do. And to try to make this example of all the things that, as you said, a lot of these I was expecting um, is typically general stuff that is about me. Some of them are arguably, I'll probably argue not 100% accurate to myself. But in my evaluation, this is what I've got. I got exhausted and tired. I feel like I have limitations in the areas of my life. I get frustrated easy. I have many past painful experiences. Sometimes I do feel alone. I'm disappointed. I feel like I'm not worthy or being capable of being a leader at work or here. I feel sometimes estranged from my family, left out. I struggle with my own self-control with sleeping patterns and food. I struggle with sin, and even though it might could sometimes be considered a good thing, a hard worker, but I work too hard sometimes, and it's to my own detriment. However, I also found out that I'm quite patient, I'm passionate, I'm hopeful, I'm glad to be a leader, I'm content with life, I'm kind, I'm genuine, open, I'm a Christian, belief in good character, trusting, I love stories, and I'm keen to listen and learn, just to name a few of some of the things I learn about myself. And some of them hit this kind of tone that's here. Uh, I am very overwhelmed by the way in which other people think who I am. And uh, usually, as I was saying before, it can be just those little boxes that, you know, that are just associated to us, but not sometimes who we truly really are. Just our outward appearance, the uh, wrapping of a box, if you will. But there's so much more to me than just these. So just to wrap this all up quickly, the way in which we see ourselves is the now common accepted way of putting ourselves into easily organized and simple boxes is quite problematic. Uh, we are so much more than what we are identified as in roles and personalities. It's something to be celebrated and talked about and spread to anyone who cares to listen. We, why do we insist on having a simple label? Why do we insist on being labeled what people label us? We are more than just idle people living life. God sees more in us. We should see more in others as well and be proud of it. Flaws strengths, positive and negative. Our character, who we are and what we do is continually molded by God. How can we draw people to God if we don't proclaim who we are and everything in our character? You want to reach people? You got to be unique. You got to be genuine. You've got to be open have to be vulnerable. Tell your story, hide nothing, bear yourself to all. God sees it in you, I see it in you. Search yourself, evaluate and reflect and make yourself a, a gooey mess of awesome. Be proud of everything you are when you look in the mirror.